Hi everyone, how are you? Um, this video is going to be a good one because it's going to be answering a question that I get in my apps all the time and that is how do I write a fundraising plan? Alright, okay let's answer that. So um, first of all, you know, most of the time that fundraising plan is going to be your internal document either for just yourself or for your company to use internally. And what I kind of always talk about in my videos, and if you've seen my previous videos, I always mention uh, I have, I used to have four and I have like seven sort of buckets of how you're going to raise money um, and I'm going to go through them and um, those should be like the sections of your business plan and of course one of the sections should be uh, how to know how much money you need to raise and I actually covered that in some depth, depth in another video that I have and I'm going to have a link to that video in again the show notes in the description of the video on YouTube. So that part is you covered in this part is how to write a fundraising plan. Now okay I'm going to assume that you've seen that video and you have already done the work of how to know how much money you need to raise because that's the whole sort of um, that's one important variable because if you don't know how much money you need, how much money you need to raise then tricky you know how I mean how can you I mean of, of course I understand that entrepreneurs will take as much money as they want, as they can, but that's not that's not possible. I mean, you've got to know your numbers because if you go to an investor or anyone else and you say, "I'm raising money," they still say, "How much money are you raising?" and you'll say, "How much you got?" or something like that, or uh, I don't know. I'll take I'll take a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand or I'll take a million. Maybe what do you what what do you, what do you think? You you know what, what's a good amount for you, or or something silly like that. Right, you gotta know how much you need to raise, and 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 so I explained that in the whole video, so I'm not gonna cover it here. So in this video, let's get right to the seven ways to raise money, uh, and that are the seven kind of sections of your fundraising plan, um, and you gotta figure out how much money you can get from each. So the first is in no real order of there's no real order of like precedence, whatever. Let's say the first thing is loans. Uh, you have to know how you can get loans like um, for example if you're an established business you can get loans from a bank but for most businesses loans from a bank are not possible so you have to go through things like Lendio, Prosper, uh, Lending Tree, you know this kind of small micro lenders and by micro I don't mean really micro I mean they lend from five thousand to a couple hundred thousand dollars so if you have not started that's quite a lot of money uh, and they have various kind of requirements from good credit to less good credit to blah 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 and of course if you've started or maybe you're not an established business but you've already started then uh, they can sort of not look at your credit so much but look at what, how your business is doing so there's some combinations of that and it depends on which company you're getting loans from there's also like uh, bridge loans things like that but they're terrible at all times so I'm not even gonna this, this, that's not an option. So, uh, so that's loans. I mean, you want, you you just want the micro loan. There's a couple of um, like kind of reasonably new micro loan companies. They 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 play nice. They don't try to like take all your money. Although in you know, the loans, that that's pretty much you're gonna lose a little money. Uh, so loans are not even a great way to fund your business. Um, almost no one advocates that, but sometimes it's the only option. So. The next is crowdfunding, uh, and that is donations. Now, if you're a nonprofit or someone else like that, or some other type of organization like that, you may have been doing fundraising by picking up the phone, call phone, and calling your previous donors, or calling people, or you know, emailing them, or whatever, or having fundraiser like events. Um, you know, you're raising donations. Uh, this is another great way. Crowdfunding is another great way to raise donations because. It's sort of like people you, who are who have not been your clients can also donate, and you you have a nice easy place for them even for your old clients or whoever wants to donate, or for new people there's a very nice kind of like online place where they can go and donate money, and there's a couple of people uh, players in that space, uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and I kind of like GoFundMe. GoFundMe is not big, but what's good about them is because they they have the least sort of constraining rules. 
you can you can raise money for any project almost um, and what's really also good about them is that they don't have a time limit in the other crowdfunding sites there's a time limit like if you don't raise your sum within like a 90 days or 60 days or something or 30 days or something like that then they kind of like kill your campaign in a way but with Go, with GoFundMe you actually have a perpetual campaign so you can spend you know you, you can you can keep fundraising for a while uh, and that's really good because you know you want to have something where people where some place where people can go and donate you can also get donations accept donations through PayPal that's another way so you can put that right on your site it doesn't some, sometimes it doesn't look extremely professional to have a PayPal right on your site so it depends on what your site is but it's an option okay the next thing is investors investors are very the next way to raise money um, and by the way so in your fundraising plan all of these like loans and other sources and grants and crowdfunding you know they're, they, they you may not get the full amount from them but you just gotta sum up all of them a little bit to get to that goal that you have so the next is the investors and investors are very difficult I mean if you can get investors they typically have deep pockets uh, and they and they can they have other investor friends and they typically if they like what you're doing they can help you like a what's called a lead investor can help you sort of get your other like minor investors and then they can get you the whole you know all the money that you need for that round uh, but for most businesses investments getting an investment is very difficult um, because investors have a lot of criteria and most businesses don't even fit in that criteria like investors they tend to want to you know they, they go for really big outcomes like billion dollar markets often and most businesses they will just not reach billion dollar markets I mean that's a rare type of even business type so if you can get an investor that's great um, and they can probably help you r raise your full the full amount you need but um, it's a rarity actually and I know investors get a lot of press and attention and everybody wants to talk to them and blah blah, blah. but it's, it's actually rare to get an investment from a real investor from a professional investor um, to, which leaves investments from friends and family uh, which is problematic because you don't want to do business from friends with friends and family but if it's your only option then it might be worth exploring um, the next option is uh, grants grants are tricky because um, if you're a nonprofit it's a slightly easier but it's, it's never easy because there's so many people who want grants and uh, even though there may be a lot of grants out there there's far more people out there who want to get grants so I personally don't know anyone who's gotten a real business grant from the government although I do know people who like from that from the federal government but I, although I do know people who have gotten grants from like the city or you know a lot, a lot of times like the city wants to promote local business and they, they might you know so if you're doing something interesting locally that it might you know or in your community but these are usually a little bit smaller grants but whatever you know I guess we'll take it uh, so those that's grants um, tricky you know you take a look at grants.gov I'll probably have a link to grants.gov. I mean, it's, it's a simple site, but you, I'll probably have a link to it in the show notes in the YouTube description. Uh, and then, so that takes care of like the sort of the institutional route. The next three areas where you can do your fundraising are sort of, uh, I guess, I call them the hustle routes, where you know, like I mentioned, you can you can do a lot of creative stuff. You can do like events, like fundraisers. You, you know, you can do whatever. Um, so and the people you know who could they can attend they, they can pay to attend the event and so that can actually raise money for you continuously because you can keep on hosting events you know if it's a workshop on something if it's a like an educational if it's entertainment and if it's an exercise event or any kind of or if it's like almost a small conference or a bigger conference um you can have that at various time intervals and keep on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and it can be a great source of revenue for you um, so that's like and that's just a one way to do it creatively you can do other creative things the next thing is to actually make money from your own revenue right so don't neglect that um, you know because there, there should be some money coming in from your operations and if there isn't 
why not? I mean, it's a rare that that can be sustainable. You know, very few companies, maybe like Instagram, made that sustainable. But but it, but that they had a certain strategy that is not applicable to almost any other business. Um, so you've got to have an eye out for your own revenue because there's nothing like having your own revenue. I mean, it's great. I mean, having that event series sort of thing actually is part of your own revenue. So it, it is already actually, you know, so it's kind of like that. And of course, the next thing is sometimes you can raise money from people who are already your clients or who you are trying to sell to because you say, hey, you know, if you put some money down or put, put the money down for the next purchase order or something, I'll make it cheaper or I'll give you more quantity, but I need the money uh, up front or something like that. Uh, or, you know, some kind of a arrangement there so that they can actually, you know, give you the money. So that's one way. And I've seen some people fundraise that way successfully because um, it, it, it's also really a nice way to figure out who your real clients might be because they're actually willing to pay for something. So that's it. That's kind of how you, those are what I would outline in a fundraising plan. Um, and of course, I would also have your cash flow statement, which is the revenue versus losses. That you, sorry, not the cash flow statement, but um, yeah, it's the cash flow statement. You, you, you have to figure out the, the money that you need to raise. And that's, the, that's what I alluded to earlier in this video. Um, so figure out the money that you need to raise, how much, um, and just watch that video because that explains it. And then see how much you can raise from each of those seven um, buckets uh, of you know types of fundraising, and hopefully it works out. Hopefully you'll get there. Of course, another thing you can do is if you need a lot of money to get started, uh, the easiest thing to do. It's not even to raise money, but to start smaller and to simplify your initial launch strategy. And very often that's possible. Um, and that will save you so much time because it will save you double the time. Not only will it save, will it save you time or for, not, for not building out the product and stuff like that because it will, it will be simpler, so it will take less time, but also you won't have to waste your time going through investors, getting applying for grants and blah, blah, blah. Because you know when you're doing all this, you're spending time and that time is worth something because otherwise if you're not fundraising you can be spending time on building your business like doing some marketing or you know fixing up your website or calling your clients and trying to sell them or whatever so get, fundraising is actually a distraction from growing your actual business this is a little bit of a separate thing um, so if you actually make your initial product launch simpler and have a simpler strategy to success, you know, kind of not so bulky that you need so much money, that may be a really great way to go here. So thanks for watching guys. I hope it was insightful. I hope you kind of get an idea of um, sort of how to go about writing your fundraising plan and how to um, actually doing it, uh, how to actually do it. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and of course, please check out my mobile apps on problemio.com and they cover business ideas, business planning, marketing and fundraising and this sort of talk is about fundraising of course. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.